Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, let's learn more about presence and gesture. How does gesture and presence work? And how can we use our physical presence and our body motions, as well as physical objects, to become more compelling public speakers? Whether we are in front of our colleagues giving a presentation or teaching a class in front of our students. First, let's watch a clip from Harvard psychologist Amy Cuddy. As you watch this clip, think about the main idea. What is the main idea of Cuddy's research? This is what we did. We decided to uh, bring people into the lab and run a little experiment. And these people adopted for two minutes either high power poses or low power poses. And I'm just going to show you five of the poses, although they took on only two. So here's one, a couple more. This one has been dubbed the Wonder Woman by the media. Here are a couple more. So you can be standing or you can be sitting. Uh, and here are the low power poses. So you're folding up, you're making yourself small. This one is very low power. When you're touching your neck, you're really kind of protecting yourself. So this is what happens. They come in, they spit into a vial. We, for two minutes, say, you need to do this or this. They don't look at pictures of the poses. We don't want to prime them with a concept of power. We want them to be feeling power, right? So two minutes they do this. We then ask them, how powerful do you feel on a series of items? And then we give them an opportunity to gamble. And then we take another saliva sample. That's it. That's the whole experiment. So this is what we find. Risk tolerance, which is the gambling, what we find is that when you're, not, when the, when you're in the high power pose condition, 86% of you will gamble. When you're in the low power pose condition, only 60%. And that's a pretty whopping significant difference. Here's what we find on testosterone. From their baseline when they come in, high power people experience about a 20% increase and low power people experience about a 10% decrease. So again, two minutes and you get these changes. Here's what you get on cortisol. High power people experience about a 25% decrease and the low power people experience about a 15% increase. So two minutes lead to these hormonal changes that configure your brain to basically be either assertive, confident and comfortable or really stress reactive um, and, you know, feeling sort of shut down. And we've all had that feeling, right? So it seems that our nonverbals do govern how we think and feel about ourselves. So it's not just others, but it's also ourselves. Also, our bodies change our minds. So check out number one on the quiz. Think about one or two sentences that can summarize Cuddy's ideas. Don't worry too much about the scientific words of hormones. Think more about the psychological effects. Okay, now I want to use our critical thinking skills. So let's watch Barack Obama and try to guess what is the public speaking tip that we can use when we speak in front of other people. Don't pay attention to his words. Think about his body language and his gesturing. Tonight is a particular honor for me because, let's face it, my presence on this stage is pretty unlikely. My father was a foreign student, born and raised in a small village in Kenya. He grew up herding goats, went to school in a tin roof shack. His father, my grandfather, was a cook a domestic servant to the British. But my grandfather had larger dreams for his son. Through hard work and perseverance, my father got a scholarship to study in a magical place, America, that shone as a beacon of freedom and opportunity to so many who had come before. Okay, you can watch that again if you like and check out number two and Use your critical thinking and give your best guess. What can Barack Obama teach us about using our nonverbal communication while speaking in front of people? Okay, let's try this again. This time we have a motivational speaker from California. His name is Tony 
Robbins. So let's listen and once again, think about what kind of tip or advice you can glean from listening to Robbins' interview. It doesn't have to be you're against the wall, but it has to be something you're hungry for because the only difference in people is hunger. And if you're not hungry, get around people that are hungry and something will hit you. You watch a conversation, you get around people that are doing better, and all of a sudden you start going, uh, my life sucks. I remember I went to a guy in, in L.A., one of the most multi-billionaire guys, I'll never forget. And I lived in the Del Mar Castle, and I was really proud. That was like the symbol of me having taken myself from being poor to providing for my family this great place. It's built from castles in Europe overlooking the ocean not far from you. And I went to this guy's house. He's a billionaire. He took me down to his wine cellar. I don't even drink wine. I went through this whole thing. At the end of the night, I was depressed. I lived in a Del Mar tenement, as far as I was concerned. I really was. I was like, I live in a crappy place, and, and all my standards changed. All of a sudden, I wasn't going to settle for living that. All of a sudden, my back was to the wall in a different way because as a man, I knew I was capable of more. So people can change their standard by getting around where it's better. People can change their standard by getting associated with what's true, like the bills they got to solve, the problems they got to do it. Or they can do it because they're excited because it's something new they want to take on. Everyone's different, but they got to find the why and they got to come up with some daily rituals to get them going and just do a step at a time. Again, don't pay attention to Robbins' words, but consider his non-verbal communication and gesture. What kind of tip or advice can you intuit from watching Robbins speak? Write down a short response on number three. Okay, let's keep moving. This is Jocko Willink. He's a Navy SEAL. What kind of non-verbal communication advice or message can you get from Willink's TED Talk. War is a nightmare. War is awful. It is indifferent and devastating and evil. War is hell. But war is also an incredible teacher, a brutal teacher. And it teaches you lessons that you will not forget. Ooh, that is a scary man. I would love to be on his good side. So check out number four. What body language, gesture, or movement advice can you get from seeing Jocko Willink's TED Talk? And finally, we have public speaker Mohammed Katani. He was a winner of the Toastmasters contest. And once again, consider his use of movement, body language, or objects, and think about what kind of advice or tips is he demonstrating. What? <laughs> All you are think smoking kills? Okay, feel free to rewind that. And on number five, write down your response. What kind of tip or advice can we learn from Katani in his public speaking? All right, thank you, everybody. I look forward to sharing your responses in class. And until then, cheers.